Hey, Ryan Miller here. Welcome to a very short video showing you how to set up sound in Unity. Um, all sounds in Unity are listened to by an audio listener, and that is your ears inside the engine. Um, audio listener comes default built into every camera that you make. Um, if it somehow falls off of your camera, if someone removes it, um, all you have to do is add component, audio listener to get it back. You need one audio listener in your scene, and it's recommended that you keep to only one and then you'll be able to hear any audio coming out of an audio source. Now an audio source is something that plays audio, something that emits sound. So that also is a component, just like the audio listener, so I can add one to the camera here with add component, um, audio source, and any MP3s, waves, AIFF, uh, OGG, uh, most sound formats work with Unity and we can just drag and drop them into the audio clip section of the audio source. This audio clip, um, like all audio sources, come with a play on awake defaulting to true. So this means as soon as I play the game, I'm going to hear some music play. These audio clips that import tend to default to 3D sound, so I recommend turning that off. If you just turn off that checkbox and hit apply, that will turn it off. Um, there's more you, that you can go into detail here, lots of settings for how this is compressed, um, how it's streamed from disk or stored in memory, um, forcing it to mono, etc. I'm not going to go through that in this video, I'm just going to make them all not 3D. Uh, 3D sound is basically just spatial sound, so if you're making a very, very immersive experience and you want to hear something to your left when you're moving by something on your left, uh, just in that left stereo channel, then that's when you would want to use 3D sound. If you're making a simple game and you don't really care where the sound is coming from, you just want it to play, I recommend sticking to 2D. It'll be easier to control your volume and it's faster. So I've got a piece of music on the camera, so it's going to follow the camera around and always play that music. That's fine, I'll leave that in there. I'll tell it to loop so that when it's done playing, it'll continue to play. And I can turn down its volume a little bit too, so I'll make it just near half volume. Make it even quieter just for the sake of our video. When I press fire one, the cube will actually jump up into the air. Let's add this jump sound to the jumping of the cube. So for this one I'm going to actually have that jump sound be called via code. Okay, so very, very simple jump script here. Uh, when I press the fire one button, I'm going to add some force upwards. Luckily for audio sources, we have a built-in reference. Um, built-in reference, kind of like this rigid body. I don't have to say, you know, get component rigid body. I can if I want, but it's a built-in reference to whatever rigid body is on that object. We have one just like that for audio. So I can really just say audio.play, and this will play the default clip on the audio source on this object. So now if I add an audio source, I put jump sound in it, I tell it not to play on awake because I want to control when it plays. I should be able to play that animation every time I click. I'll show you one more way to hook up your audio. Um, perhaps your jump is not controlled by physics. Maybe your jump is just an animation that plays. So let's say it does animation.play jump. And let's take this out for a minute. Let's let the animation control the audio. We can use animations to trigger events in code. So I'll get rid of that rigid body as well. I'll add an animation component. do a quick jump animation on this guy. There you go. Very, very quick, simple jump. Make sure that that default animation is set. Make sure that plays. Good. 
probably want to turn off play automatically. So in this animation itself, go back to our animation browser here. You've probably used this add keyframe button before, but you may not know about this add event button. What the add event button does, when we click it, it allows us to add a function from any script attached to the object. So I don't have any selected right now, but if I go back into model develop, let's say I add void play jump sound. And that's just audio.play. So now when I go back here, should be able to click here, and there it is in our list. So what this is doing, whenever this frame of animation gets hit, or something past it, if we're dropping frames for whichever reason, it's going to make sure that this function is called. This is very good for precisely queuing sounds.